on this beautiful Caribbean island, Fidel Castro has led Cuba for over 40 years. A socialist survivor in a capitalist world. For some, he is a demon. For others, a symbol of resistance and social justice. Ese árbol no existía. Vamos por la casa que fue de la abuela. In 1996, at the age of 70, Fidel revisited his childhood home with a longtime friend, the world famous Colombian novelist Gabriel Garcia Marquez. In la lengua, con la misma lengua que acababa de decirle horror y Fidel began life in Biran, a farming area far from Cuba's capital. He was the third oldest of three boys and four girls. Fidel's father, Ángel, who was an immigrant worker from Spain, eventually became a wealthy sugarcane planter. His parents are buried near the family home. It was in this public school that Fidel first studied as a child. From this simple school, Fidel's family sent him to a Catholic boarding school in Cuba's second largest city, Santiago de Cuba and then to the Jesuit-run Belen High School in Havana. Él puede hacer alarde de ser el hombre que más memoria tiene que yo conozca. Hay una cosa que hacía él, las asignaturas que no le gustaban, él se las aprendía gráficamente, gráficamente de memoria. De modo que arrancaba las páginas del libro Y lo leía después, después lo leía como si estuviera, si tuviera el, la, estuviera leyendo el libro actualmente. Él venía de un colegio donde no había practicado tanto o casi nada el, el básquetbol, eh, sino más bien el soccer. Y en La Habana lo que valía era el básquet. Pues él empezó enseguida a querer practicar básquet y básquet y básquet. Y enseguida me dijo a mí, oiga padre, no podría ponerme usted una luz en el flor de básquet sobre el aro para que cuando los demás se acuestan yo pueda de noche seguir practicando. Cuando Fidel Castro se graduó, yo escribí, que era, yo digo, Fidel Castro es madera de héroe y la historia de su patria un día tendrá que hablar de él. At the University of Havana, where Fidel arrived in 1945 to study law, the political atmosphere was so highly charged that it often turned to violence. Students fighting against corruption and injustice were targets of repression. Fidel entered the fray, not as a communist, but as a radical nationalist with a passion for social justice. La universidad fue una gran escuela, la verdad, una, una gran escuela donde para mí eh, nos formamos nosotros y se formó desde luego Fidel. Nosotros organizamos el movimiento estudiantil junto con el movimiento obrero. Fidel tenía ya desde entonces características muy especiales. La asamblea más compleja, la situación más, eh, más difícil de desentrañar, él la dominaba con la palabra. En la escuela de filosofía, el alumnado era casi todo muchachas, y además muy lindas. Tanto que en una de las casas de estudiantes que, en que estas muchachas, muchas del interior, se alojaban, le habíamos puesto la bombonera. Eh, Fidel venía a la escuela de filosofía muy a menudo porque había una carita, una muchacha, un rostro que lo había subyugado. 
He was married to a young woman who was the daughter of one of the elites. That marriage, however, only lasted uh, six years because he was imprisoned for his revolutionary activities and under considerable pressure from her family, uh, they were divorced. He did, however, have a, uh, a son uh, from that marriage. In 1952, now a practicing lawyer, Fidel ran as a candidate for the Orthodox Party, an anti-corruption coalition. Cuba's hero of independence, José Martí, inspired the movement. The election never took place. General Batista, who had been in power before, staged a coup to prevent an Orthodox Party victory. Por aquella época, lo que se vivía con Batista era la corrupción rampante, el juego, la prostitución, la debacle, la violencia. Estamos hablando de un país que iba al desastre. And I knew Cuba before Fidel Castro. I went there. It was the playground of the mafia. We had all the big jazz nightclubs that Nat King Cole and myself were, were, were petitioned to perform in. Uh, I, not, I did not see democracy in Cuba. Uh, as a matter of fact, if anything, I saw blatant racism and oppression. After the Batista coup, all political parties and constitutional rights were suspended. The university was shut down. But the students continued protesting. Fidel began organizing a clandestine opposition group. Muchos eran gente joven con inquietudes eh, revolucionarias que seguían a Fidel porque lo veían con condiciones de líder y porque además le decía esta etapa de Cuba hay que resolverla por la acción revolucionaria por cuanto no hay otra salida. On the 26th of July, 1953, Fidel led an attack on the Moncada garrison in Santiago de Cuba. This marked the beginning of the armed struggle against Batista. Pensábamos tratar de provocar un levantamiento nacional para el derrocamiento de Batista. Caso de no lograrse el levantamiento nacional, o en el caso de que Batista pudiera re, eh, reaccionar con fuerzas superiores y atacarnos aquí en Santiago de Cuba, la idea nuestra era con las armas del cuartel Moncada marchar a las montañas y librar la guerra irregular en las montañas. The operation had hardly begun when a group of Fidel's followers were surprised by a military patrol. Two of the 150 participants were women, Aide Santa Maria and Melba Hernandez. 61 were killed, only six in combat. The rest were tortured and murdered after their arrest. Both women survived. Fue, fue muy dura, porque después cuando resultamos prisioneros y nos llevaron para el cuartel, y nos sentaron así en el piso, de allí iban sacando a los muchachos, o devolviendo a los muchachos, como el caso de Gómez García, que nos, nos los devolvieron brutalmente herido, destrozado, sin dientes, aquello era una cosa terrible. A mí no me gusta hablar de esto. Fidel survived thanks to a caring black officer. Then began what would become the most famous trial in Cuban history. Fidel en su alegato, está terminando su alegato, da así en la mesa un, con las manos y dice, condenadme, no importa, la historia me absolverá. Eso es lo que dice Fidel. Todo el personal se queda a la expectativa, se quedan inmóviles. Y entonces él, de pie, vuelve a hacer así, dice, bueno, ya terminé. Al pasar por delante de mí, cuando ya se lo llevara, me dijo, ¿tomaste nota? Digo, sí. Fidel and 29 of his comrades were imprisoned on the Isle of Pines. Fidel for 15 years. He defiantly named his political movement after the date of the Moncada attack, the 26th of July, and smuggled out a manifesto based on his trial defense, entitled, History Will Absolve Me. It would become the inspiration for the revolution. Yo tuve mi, mi actitud de rebeldía, me aislaron. Tenía todo el tiempo para leer. Leía 12 horas, 14 horas, 16 horas. 
y después nunca he tenido oportunidad de ver tantas horas seguidas. Fidel and his companions were freed after two years. Batista, giving in to popular protest, declared a general amnesty for political prisoners. Six weeks after their release, Fidel left for Mexico, and there, with a group of followers, they planned a new attempt to overthrow the dictator. Looking for support, Fidel toured Cuban communities in the United States, in New York, New Jersey, and Florida. Many sympathizers, both rich and poor, contributed to his cause. By the following year, 1956, Fidel had assembled the nucleus of a guerrilla force and felt ready to return to Cuba. A young Argentine doctor, Ernesto Che Guevara, joined them. Él los unió en primer lugar sus ideales. Hay una pequeña escrito, un pequeño escrito de mi papá donde dice, me pasé toda la noche hablando con el jefe, sí, con Fidel, y al otro día amanecí siendo miembro de su, de su grupo, ¿no? After the legendary 12-hour meeting, Che's life became an important part of the Cuban Revolution. 82 people, including Che, set out from Mexico on the cabin cruiser Granma. An uprising in Santiago de Cuba was planned to coincide with their arrival. Horas antes de entrar ese embargo, se cayó un hombre al agua. Empezaron a buscarlo y el hombre no aparecía y gritábamos a Fulanito, Roque, Roque, no aparecía Roque. Hasta que al final, dice Fidel, y de aquí no nos vamos hasta que no lo, hasta que no lo salvemos. Eso conmovió a la gente, se le levantó la, la, la combatividad al escuchar esa frase. Y decir, coño, con este hombre no hay, no me ha abandonado. ¿Y lo encontraron? No hay olvidado. Sí, sí, lo encontramos, lo encontramos. A costa de que se, se echara a perder la, la, la expedición. The synchronization of the uprising and landing failed. The Batista military successfully put down the revolt in the city. The grandma arrived two days later than expected, and the group landed in a mangrove swamp. The 82 men scattered, but were soon discovered by Batista's forces. Fidel and a few others escaped and refused to admit defeat. Of the original 82, only 21 managed to regroup in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. This is where the guerrilla war began, and the initial group was able to survive and grow. Che Guevara was the group's doctor. The first commander that did Fidel Castro in the Sierra, with the consensus of all of us, said, here is the first commander, it's Che. Porque es el más preparado, porque conoce los caminos, porque para mí es el más estratega. Después fue Che. Después fue Raúl y yo. Y después Camilo, Ramirito y los demás. Después. Much of their support came from the farmers in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. Some of them joined the guerrillas and became commanders. Both men and women soon joined Fidel's guerrilla movement, and despite traditional male prejudice, a women's battalion was formed. One of the most important people in his life was a woman called Celia Sanchez. She was the daughter of a rural physician. Her father had provided free health care to many of the poor, impoverished rural people in the area. And she was very much attracted to Fidel's revolutionary movement. Celia Sanchez remained at Fidel's side for 20 years and held important government posts until her death in 1980. Fidel and his commanders built up their 26th of July movement guerrilla army from a wide range of political allegiances. Batista's forces were trained by the United States, which also armed them with tanks, artillery, and aircraft. They threw all that force against the guerrillas in a war that lasted two years. The 26th of July had a strong underground movement in the cities. Uh, there were sabotage efforts against the Batista government and demonstrations and so forth. 
the Batista government reacted very strongly. Uh, bodies were left by the side of the road. Uh, students, uh, young people who were suspected of being rebel sympathizers were shot, or in some cases jailed and tortured. Uh, as a result of all that, public opinion turned massively against uh, Batista. An estimated 20,000 people were murdered by government forces during the Batista dictatorship. The rebels put out leaflets and a newspaper, and by 1958 also had a radio station keeping the people informed about developments. Fidel's interviews with foreign journalists ended rumors that he had been killed. Aware of the importance of the media, he made sure he was accessible to the press, even in English. Our political philosophy is representative democracy and social justice in a well-planned economy. Muchas de las cosas que hicimos están por encima de lo que nos imaginábamos en aquella época, incluso. Y algunas cosas de las ocurridas han sido más difíciles también y más duras de las que nos imaginábamos en aquella época. In January 1959, Fidel made a triumphal entry in Havana. It had taken 25 months to defeat Batista. With victory achieved, Fidel sought to make Cuba a united and independent nation. I'll never forget that first speech that he gave a few days after he had entered Havana. I was watching on television, but they released a flight of doves, a symbol of peace, but one of the doves uh, fluttered up into the air and landed on his shoulder. There was a gasp because uh, the pigeon uh, was the messenger of Oshun sent to uh, indicate the anointed one. Todo se emocionó. Este es un pueblo, este un pueblo que en los años aquellos era muy creyente. El otro era más de sincretismo. Ah, de las cosas africanas, las palomas, el barco. Ya a partir de allí, la gente pensaba que Fidel era el, el, enviado, de, el enviado de Cristo aquí, ¿viste? Just 30 days ago, Fidel Castro entered Havana to be greeted by cheering mobs as one of the greatest heroes in Cuba's history. A week before that, General Batista and his top aides had fled the country, leaving it to Castro, his rebel army, and their supporters. Good evening, Fidel Castro. You must have had a very busy week. How do you feel? Well, I feel, really, I feel well, something tired. I'm told that you saw your mother for the first time in four years this Christmas Eve. That must have been quite a reunion. What did she have to say to you? She began to cry at the beginning. And that in several minutes, she could not tell any word to me. Fidelito. <laughs> Hello, Fidel Jr. Hi. That's a very good-looking puppy you have there. Is he yours? No, it's somebody gave it to my father for a present. Uh-huh. When do you think you'll be visiting us again? Oh, well, I should the light. I think when I have a chance. Well, will that be uh, with the beard or without it? <laughs> well, uh, it's possible if, if I go to the United States with the beard, because I am not thinking now to, to cut my beard, because I, I am accustomed to my beard. And my beard means many things to my country. When we have uh, fulfilled our promise of good government, I will cut might be a... The first people who left, I mean, in the first days after the revolution, by and large were Batista supporters and members of the Batista government. 
Uh, Batista fled the island New Year's Eve of 1959, and many of his supporters followed immediately uh, thereafter. Those accused of murder and torture who didn't flee the country were brought to trial. The trials, however, were criticized in the U.S. media. I was following on television the revolutionary trials that began right away, which were the beginnings of the problems with the United States. In fact, a lot of the CIA's people, or some of them at least, were uh, on trial for having been murderers and torturers of Batista. The same year he came to power, Fidel was invited to visit countries throughout Latin America. He made passionate speeches, calling for unity among the peoples of that region. He proposed the creation of a Latin American market. Also in 1959, he embarked on a tour of the United States, hoping to promote a better understanding of the Cuban Revolution. Did you ask for any economic no. assistance? No. Here, you in the United States, are accustomed to see government coming from for money? No. I came for, for good relations, for good understanding, for good <laughs> economical relations. We are now poor country, but in a rich, poor people, but in a rich country. What we want is to work in our rich country. Vice President Nixon was sent to meet the new Cuban leader after President Eisenhower refused to see him. Nixon later wrote a memo describing Fidel as a communist who should be overthrown. Cuba is an obsession with American leaders, and it really doesn't matter whether they're Democrats or Republicans. It's almost a psychosis. The United States is simply incapable of dealing rationally with Castro. When Fidel got to New York, he had a warmer welcome. Aquí esperan el mayor Wagner de Nueva York y su esposa, así como los altos dignatarios de la Babel de Hierro, para rendir homenaje al más ilustre visitante del momento, Fidel Castro. Fidel gave a reception at the Cuban Embassy. Es la primera vez que se pone el traje de gala. Se miró hacia el espejo y dijo que vaya, me quito esto, porque me parezco a Tito. Termina la recepción y no aparecía por ningún lado. Hasta que como a las dos de la mañana la llegó y nosotros sentados allá abajo en la bajada esperando. Dije, ¿dónde tú estabas? Dice, no, me fui al barrio chino a comer sopa china. En Nueva York solo esa noche, esas cosas que tiene. En 1960, he traveled to the United States for a second time to address the General Assembly of the United Nations. When the manager of the Shelburne Hotel, worried about adverse publicity, asked him to leave, Fidel threatened to camp out on the grounds of the UN. El dueño negro del Hotel Teresa, del barrio negro de Harlem, ofrecía la, el hotel, inclusive gratuitamente, a Fidel y a sus compañeros de delegación. Inmediatamente Fidel dijo, vamos para el Hotel Teresa. At the Hotel Teresa, world leaders visited him. Nasser from Egypt and Nehru from India. Black activist Malcolm X also called on him, as did the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. Aquí Khrushchev le está diciendo a la prensa en contestación a una pregunta de si Fidel era comunista. Dice, yo no sé si Fidel es comunista. Yo lo que sí sé es que soy fidelista. On his return to Cuba, the first priority of Fidel's revolution was the redistribution of land through the Agrarian Reform Act.
Under Batista, foreigners had owned more than 70% of the arable land. Most of the sugar industry was in U.S. hands. At first, quite modest land expropriations were proposed. They even included land owned by Fidel's family. Fidel quería que fuera la primera. Mi padre decía, voy a, tengo un hijo estudiando para abogado para que le defienda los intereses. Y bueno, fue, mire, el abogado fue el que firmó la ley de reforma agraria. Besides land redistribution, the reform included health care, education, housing, and road building in rural zones. Ya que nuestra reforma agraria afectó intereses de grandes compañías norteamericanas. A nosotros nos hacían la guerra por hacer la reforma agraria. Y en campo yo, después Kennedy estaba promoviendo la reforma agraria en América Latina para evitar revoluciones radicales. Yeah, about a year after the agrarian reform was introduced, and some American properties, rural properties, the King Ranch and so forth, were nationalized, the Cuban government ordered the foreign refineries, uh, two of which were American, to refine Soviet crude oil. I think their first inclination was to do it, but they were encouraged by the U.S. Treasury Department not to. So they refused. They would not refine the Soviet crude. The Cuban government then nationalized those refineries, the oil companies in Cuba. The United States retaliated for that by cutting off the Cuban sugar quota, and Cuba then retaliated for that by nationalizing all U.S. properties in Cuba. And in October of 1960, the United States imposed the embargo against Cuba. So it was sort of one step led to another. When Fidel lee the decree, the most important of the Revolution Cubana, in his afan to control everything, the emotion of Fidel is so that Fidel emudes, he loses his voice. Y aquello fue una expectación tremenda porque era ante las cámaras nacionales e internacionales y Fidel mudo delante del micrófono. Y entonces Raúl, inesperadamente, toma el micrófono y continúa leyendo el decreto de, de expropiación de las eh, grandes compañías norteamericanas en Cuba. Porque se ha ido una voz por un momento, pero ahí está él y estará. Compañía Cubana de Electricidad. Central to understanding the Cuban Revolution is the relationship historically between Cuba and the United States. This was more than anything a nationalistic movement that Fidel was able to capitalize on, where the people in Cuba from the founding of the country had struggled for a sense of their own sovereignty and independence. In addition to land reform, Fidel placed education at the heart of the revolution. Thousands of young people set out for the most isolated parts of the island to teach the farmers to read and write. was declared the year of education. In the midst of false rumors, 
that the revolution would take children away from their parents. The U.S. State Department and the Catholic Church organized what was later called Operation Peter Pan, which airlifted 14,000 unaccompanied Cuban children to the United States. At the same time, other Cubans left for the United States and joined the exile community. The CIA began to plan the assassination of Fidel and Raul and Che, whatever leadership they could get, but especially Fidel, so as to demoralize the Cuban people and make the Bay of Pigs invasion more likely to be successful. In 1961, John Kennedy inherited the invasion plans from Eisenhower. He allowed it to go ahead, but vetoed the use of U.S. combat forces. As preliminary acts leading to the invasion, saboteurs burned thousands of acres of sugarcane, and the La Cubre, a Belgian freighter carrying arms, was blown up at a Havana dock. A second bomb was timed to explode as volunteers reached the burning ship to help the victims. Over 100 people were killed and hundreds more wounded. Moreover, exiled Cuban pilots flying American planes painted with Cuban insignia bombed two airports, killing a number of civilians. Again, Fidel called on the Cuban people. On April 16, 1961, in a dramatic speech following the funeral of those who had been killed, he made one of the most important declarations in Cuban history. Primero que empieza a preguntar, ¿están de acuerdo con la reforma urbana? Y entonces los de adelante se ven todos levantando el rifle y todo el pueblo atrás, ¿no? Entonces, sí, todo el mundo levanta. ¿Están de acuerdo con la reforma urbana? ¿Están de acuerdo con la reforma de la enseñanza? ¿Están de acuerdo, bueno, con toda la revolución que se ha hecho en la enseñanza, en la salud? Sí, sí, sí. Entonces dice, esto que hemos hecho se llama socialismo. Y que esa revolución socialista la defendemos con esos fusiles. Fidel dirigió personalmente las operaciones y rechazaba la petición de nosotros que se pusiera a un mayor recuerdo, a una mayor distancia del frente de combate. The Bay of Pigs invasion, which was launched from Nicaragua, ended in disaster. The forces directed by the United States met with intense, unexpected Cuban resistance, and the battle ended in 72 hours. The captured Cuban exiles were later exchanged for baby food and medicine. In the mountainous regions, opposition groups financed by the CIA formed pockets of resistance against the revolution, but they were eventually overcome. The overt war against the country became a covert war against the man. It was a long-running policy of the United States government, not just of the CIA, because they carry out the orders. They don't determine who's going to get assassinated. But they carry out the orders, and they had the orders from the uh, higher-ups in the National Security Council and the Eisenhower and Kennedy and Johnson administrations. What attentados había contra usted? Plenty. Atentados. Sabré con llegue al cielo. La CIA aparece todos los atentados de Fidel, con fusiles, en batido con el cénico, en cigarro, en pelo, en no sé cuántas cosas. ¿no? Siempre este está protegido en, con su traje. ¿Cuál traje? ¿Cuál su? Ya me parece si vamos a Dice que todo, todo el mundo usted. dice que usted tiene un, un chaleco a prueba de bala. No. No. Voy a desembarcar así en Nueva York. I will land in New York like this. Tengo un chaleco. I will land in New York like this. Tengo un chaleco moral. I have a moral one. A moral vest. A moral vest. 
es fuerte, es strong. Ese me ha protegido siempre. That one has protected me always. Es uno de los más ha intentado matar, la verdad. Pero parece que tiene siete vidas como el gato. Porque siempre está parado. And there's the fact that they haven't been able to kill him. I mean, that must really be upsetting. That they have not been able to kill this man who has persisted in being exactly who he is for all of these years against the mightiest power on the earth. It's quite phenomenal. Faced with this massive hostility from the U.S., the giant, the Colossus to the north, who is he going to turn to to protect his revolution? Sweden? India? There was only one other power on the globe that could provide any promise that that revolution perhaps could survive and last, and that was the Soviet Union. Cuba threw in its lot with the Soviet Union. One year later, Khrushchev came up with a plan to install Soviet missiles on Cuban soil. Castro reluctantly agreed to accept the missiles, but then he said, uh, at least if you're going to deliver the missiles, make it a public act. But Khrushchev thought he could do it uh, clandestinely and it would spring it on the Americans. U.S. spy planes discovered the missiles, which brought the Soviet Union and the United States to the brink of nuclear war. The crisis ended when the president's brother, Robert Kennedy, negotiated a secret deal with Khrushchev. The Soviet Union would remove the missiles if the United States withdrew its missiles from Turkey and later promised not to invade Cuba. When Khrushchev then took the missiles out without the courtesy of notifying Castro or consulting with him, Castro was furious. To mend relations between the two countries, Fidel was invited to visit the Soviet Union. His personal friendship with Khrushchev was also restored. I was here and Khrushchev was here. And I don't know what animal was coming and I shot in this direction. And it was about 10 meters away in front of Khrushchev. That Khrushchev who was a farmer, you know, he was a peasant. I just remember that Khrushchev did like this. <laughs> what kind of man have I brought here? <laughs> I hardly saved my life. And you know what crossed my mind at that moment? What will happen if in one of these hunting in adventures, if, if in an accident, I kill Khrushchev? Oh, my God. <laughs> you can imagine what would have happened? <laughs> Well, he was caught in somewhat of a difficult dilemma. Pragmatically, he needed the support of the Soviet Union uh, because economically they were completely dependent. So he then constructed a relationship with the Soviet Union where he was constantly looking for ways to assert independence from the Soviets, particularly in the foreign policy arena. There were earth-shaking changes about to happen. And Fidel's ability to give expression to uh, those historical changes uh, um, allowed him to, to emerge as the sort of representative of the possibility of third world countries you know, moving away from the capitalist orbit uh, toward a different kind of future. The Cuban Revolution, with Fidel and Che at its head, became an inspiration to others seeking political change in Latin America. Ahora sí, la historia tendrá que contar con los pobres de América, con los explotados y vilipendiados de América Latina que han decidido empezar a escribir ellos mismos para siempre su historia. After a dramatic insurgent experience in the Congo, 
Che led a guerrilla group in the Bolivian jungle. On October 8, 1967, they were ambushed. Che, who was wounded in the fighting, was taken prisoner and murdered the next day. Members of the Bolivian army threw his body and those of his comrades into a secret grave. Si queremos un modelo de hombre, un modelo de hombre que no pertenece a este tiempo, un modelo de hombre que pertenece a los tiempos futuros, de corazón digo que ese modelo es el Che. Fidel continued to support struggles all over the world. Queremos brindarle al pueblo de Vietnam nuestra más decidida solidaridad y apoyo. In Vietnam, where Ho Chi Minh led a popular liberation movement, Cuba sent sugar, rice, and blood donations, and trained doctors, engineers, teachers, and agricultural workers. Fidel se lamentaba no haber conocido a Ho Chi Minh. Según esto así de de impotencia, Fidel hace así y da unos pasos para adelante, para atrás, y hace así y dice, porque lo que no me perdonaré nunca, haberme demorado el poquito de tiempo que me demoré en llegar a Vietnam, que no me permitió conocer a Ho Chi Minh. Eso no me lo perdonaré nunca, Melba, no haber conocido a ese hombre tan gigante que tú sí conociste. In 1970, Allende's Chilean revolution offered another model of change, the peaceful road to socialism. Fidel made a supportive tour of the country. En Chile está ocurriendo un proceso único, insólito, Es un proceso revolucionario donde los revolucionarios tratan de llevar adelante los cambios pacíficamente. Al pueblo chileno que siempre estuvo y estará junto al pueblo de Cuba y a su proceso revolucionario. For the United States, the Chilean road to socialism was no more acceptable than the Cuban one. In 1973, the CIA backed a coup by General Pinochet, which led to President Allende's violent death. Cuba backed the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, who were victorious in 1979. The assassination of his friend Maurice Bishop in Grenada was a great blow to Fidel. Internal divisions in Grenada opened the way for the United States to invade. Cuban construction workers were caught in the middle and some were killed and wounded. With the change of the political climate in Latin America, Fidel visits Ecuador. There have been a lot of changes in the last 25 or 30 years in the hemisphere. Yo diría sí que tenemos más conciencia que nunca de nuestra identidad y de nuestra independencia. 30 years after Che Guevara was murdered in Bolivia, his remains and some of those who fought with him were finally found and returned to Cuba. Their families were at the airport. Che's daughter, who was five years old when he left, and the man with whom he is always identified, paid tribute to him and his guerrilla comrades. Hace más de 30 años, nuestros padres se despidieron de nosotros. Partieron para continuar los ideales de Bolívar, de Martí, 
un continente unido e independiente. No volvimos a verlos. En esa época, la mayoría de nosotros éramos muy pequeños. Ahora somos hombres y mujeres, vivimos, quizás por primera vez, momentos de mucho dolor, de intensa pena. Hoy llegan a nosotros sus restos, pero no llegan vencidos. Vienen convertidos en héroes, eternamente jóvenes, valientes, fuertes, audaces. Nadie puede quitarnos eso. Siempre estarán vivos junto a sus hijos, en su pueblo. Hasta la victoria siempre, patria o muerte. Muchas veces he soñado, yo a veces le he contado a la gente las cosas que uno sueña. Y he soñado que estoy, he hablado, que estoy hablando con él, que está vivo. Una cosa muy especial, una persona que le cuesta mucho trabajo resignarse a la idea de su muerte. Y a qué obedece eso, a mi juicio, y es que tiene una presencia siempre tan permanente. En, en todo. If I was writing history, um, I would write about um, the way in which Fidel, as the leader of one of the smallest countries uh, in the world, helped to shape uh, uh, the destinies of millions of people across the globe. llenado un capítulo muy intenso en la historia de Cuba y en la historia de América Latina. Durante este tiempo, él condujo a Cuba a ser como la conciencia crítica de este continente. It's not just Castro the man, it's, it's, it, 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 he carries with him a meaning, a signification, which is of tremendous importance to people like ourselves who are the marginalized of the world. And Africa, as a mother country, to so many Cubans, needed to be addressed as part and parcel of the worldwide thing of African liberation. Right from the beginning, Cuba's revolutionary ideals not only spread throughout Latin America, but also forged strong ties with national liberation leaders, such as Secu Touré, Amilcar Cabral, Julius Nyerere, Samora Machel, and Agostino Neto. When the invasion of Angola by troops regular of Africa del Sur, we could not cross our arms. And when the MPLA solicited our help, we offered the necessary help. In 1975, as Angola moved towards independence from Portugal, the CIA, along with the apartheid government of South Africa, tried to bring down the new Angolan government. At the request of the Angolan president, Fidel sent 36,000 troops to keep the South African forces from attacking Luanda, the capital. For many Cubans, whose ancestors were African slaves, the fight in Angola was a way to repair a debt to history. Ustedes son los del regimiento, ¿verdad? ¿Qué tiempo llevan por acá? No, llevan poco tiempo. ¿Poco tiempo? ¿Tú de dónde eres? Santiago. ¿Qué tú? 
Santiago. Pero muchos santiagueros aquí, pero hay gente que llama de santiaguero. ¿Y tú de dónde? Chico de Ávila. Chico de Ávila. In 14 years of war, over 300,000 Cubans, doctors, teachers and engineers, as well as soldiers, played an important role in Angola. More than 2,000 lost their lives. In 1988, Fidel sent in more Cuban troops for the decisive battle at Quito Cuanavale and directed operations from Cuba. The defeat of the South African army drove a large nail into the coffin of apartheid and helped advance the struggle of the South African people. Una derrota en aquellas condiciones hubiera podido significar el fin de la Revolución Cubana. Y todo eso ocurrió después del 75. Pero hay que reunir todo el material y eso. Pero nosotros no hemos escrito ni siquiera la historia de la Revolución Cubana. Had it not been for the Cuban presence in Africa, and in particular in Angola, the history of Africa would have never been what it is now, one of the greatest friends that Cuba has, is Nelson Mandela and his appreciation for what the Cuban people did and Fidel Castro. But I think if you don't understand that history, then you'll never really understand the enormous success and the importance of the Cuban revolution. Well, my president, my president, my brother, my brother, how are you? My brother. Please. Please. Very nice to see you. Please sit down. Now, one thing before we say anything. Una cosa antes de hablar, nada, nada. Before we say anything. Antes de hablar absolutamente de cualquier tema. You must tell me when you are coming to South Africa. Me tiene que decir cuándo viene para Sudáfrica. Yo sé, no, 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 you have not come to our country. Cuba no ha venido a visitarnos. Usted no ha ido a visitarnos. When are you coming? ¿Cuándo viene? <laughs> no he visitado a mi patria surafricana. I haven't visited my South African homeland yet. La quiero como una patria. I want it. I love it as a homeland. Y por el pueblo I love it as a homeland as I love you and the South African people. When are you coming to South Africa? Pero ¿cuándo viene a Sudáfrica? Creo que va a tener que ser hoy mismo. Va a tener I think it will have to be today. I will have to fly back with you. No, you are very, very, very sure. You are living at 10, so we are catching the plane together. Soon afterwards, Fidel did go to South Africa and on his way stop off in Namibia, where he was greeted by Sam Nijoma, the nation's leader. Welcome to the Republic of Namibia. The country in which you helped to liberate, be liberated. In South Africa, Mandela was waiting. Fidel was invited to address the South African Parliament. Convierta Sudáfrica en un en modelo de un mundo futuro más justo y más humano. Let South Africa be a model of a more just and more humane future. Si ustedes pueden, todos podemos. If you can do it, we will all be able to do it.
Fidel is linked to the uh, post-colonial era as the figure who more than any, I think, symbolizes independence and sovereignty of small nations, shaking off the yoke of the imperial powers, uh, and the fact that he has been there for as long as he has and has been able to magnify his role to really a global, a global force from this tiny island base. It is easy to build a nation it is far more difficult to shape a society. And this is what Cuba is doing. It will need all the time in the world. It will need all the humility, all the meekness, all the generosity of spirit to itself and to others to emerge. In the 70s and 80s, Cuba's battleground on the home front was the economy. Tremendous efforts were made to industrialize the country and create shared wealth in spite of the continuing U.S. blockade. Cuba was dependent on a single crop, sugar. The Soviet Union promised to buy as much as could be produced. Fidel tried to spur the country on through personal example in the attempt to reach new harvest levels. <laughs> y salir del subdesarrollo en las condiciones de Cuba todavía más bloqueada por Estados Unidos. The paradox of Cuba's independence, depending on support from the Soviet Union, involved Fidel in a balancing act that lasted 30 years. Help from the Soviet Union made it possible for Cuba to maintain its advances in universal education and health care, and to promote sports and scientific development as well as greater industrial diversification. The government of Fidel Castro has shown a world that is teeming with billions of impoverished people that it is possible for a very poor country emerging from sickness and ignorance and corruption and poverty of a Batista regime to within a few short years educate all of its children to create a system of education that is comprehensive that reaches the entire society that abolishes illiteracy that is capable of export to other countries to help them learn to read and write and grow and know. By the mid-1980s, Fidel began to perceive problems in the economy and industry. Supplies of goods became sporadic, and there was growing corruption. The Cuban dream of an egalitarian society was in danger. Fidel's response to the crisis was to personally oversee every aspect of Cuban society. He criticized, cajoled, and reorganized in his own unique style. Even during the most difficult crises, Fidel has always emphasized the development of sports. Cuba now ranks among the top 10 countries in Olympic medals. Under Fidel Castro, Cubans became famous as artists, as filmmakers, as writers, as baseball players, as boxers, as scientists, and as soldiers. So he took a country, and he made them somebody, and there was a cost. And that's the part, I think, that the American press, uh, and certainly his critics, emphasize. Cubans answer American critics who say they don't show sufficient respect for human rights by saying, they respect the most basic human rights, uh, providing uh, health care, enough to eat, a place to slay, the, the basic needs 
uh, of life. And as for uh, civil rights, they respect those also, they say, but that they will not tolerate anything against the revolution because the revolution is supported by the people. Claro que la mayoría del pueblo apoya la revolución. La gran mayoría, no la mayoría, la gran mayoría. Como ejemplo eh, máximo de este apoyo, las elecciones nuestras, que son elecciones abiertas, democráticas y populares, verdaderamente populares. Porque, por ejemplo, yo he sido elegido en dos ocasiones como diputado a la Asamblea Nacional del Poder Popular. Y yo soy un escritor, un intelectual, no soy un político, tampoco soy militante del Partido Comunista. Yo soy partidario de la libertad de expresión, sin duda ninguna, porque si no estaría loco. Pero comprendo que la libertad de expresión y la pluralidad de partidos es difícil frente a un país, en un país que está pre, permanentemente acosado por un vecino que está a 90 millas. Entonces eso es producto de la actitud defensiva del pueblo, del gobierno de Cuba. And then came an unexpected blow, one that will change life on the island, the collapse of the socialist bloc. Gorbachev had traveled to Cuba in 1989 to sign new trade agreements, but within months the Soviet system had collapsed and the agreements were worthless. Fidel's revolution now faced its toughest challenge since the early days in the Sierra Maestra. Within two years of the collapse, the so-called special period, severe rationing was introduced. Fuel became scarce. Export earnings fell by 60% and imports by 70%. Productivity ground to a near standstill for want of raw materials and many factories were closed. Some chose to leave. Many in Miami forecast Fidel's end. Estamos en periodo especial, un periodo difícil, un periodo uno de los más difíciles de nuestra historia. ¿Por qué? Porque no hemos tenido que quedar solo frente al imperio, solito. ¿Y qué hacía falta para quedarse solo frente al imperio? Había falta unidad, pero hacía falta valor, hacía falta patriotismo, habría falta espíritu revolucionario, un pueblo débil, un pueblo blandengue, un pueblo cobarde, se rinde y vuelve a la esclavitud, pero un pueblo digno, un pueblo valiente como nosotros no se rinde y no vuelve jamás a la esclavitud. Uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union, it was expected that Cuba would fall very quickly. Uh, within a year or two, the socialist revolution in Cuba would be over. I think it's extraordinary <laughs> that now, a decade later, uh, Cuba survives. In the present reality of the world, we cannot speak about the under the ideal conditions so it felt good. However, all the social progress attained under socialism in our country, we shall defend it. We have had to conduct an economic opening since we lost capital, the money that we had lost, markets, and technology. Y ahora necesitamos and now mercado, capital we need markets, technology, and capital para poder desarrollar in order to be able to develop our country. During the special period, New agreements were signed with Canada and European countries in the spheres of nickel, tobacco, biotechnology, the pharmaceutical industry, and communications. Tourism was given a big boost, and a wave of hotel building began. Fidel oversaw important tourism projects checking many details personally. <laughs> many joint ventures were established, especially with European countries, and this became an important source of income. Años, 
¿Cómo no? Cubans know little about Fidel's personal life. It is said that he has eight children and eight grandchildren and has been married for over 30 years. En segundo lugar, Secondly, siempre fui opuesto I was always opposed, a mezclar I have always been opposed la política to mixing politics con los problemas íntimos personales. With life. Y en ese sentido me he reservado sense, una libertad total. Total so, hay poca gente en el mundo que se ha podido reservar esa libertad. Most politicians would not wish to discuss their personal lives, it's, it's their business, it's their private business. They don't have the luxury that Castro does simply to say no. One of Fidel's closest friends is Nobel Prize winner Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Realmente lo que consolidó esa amistad fueron los libros. Y descubrí que es tan buen lector que yo antes de publicar un libro le traigo los originales. Es como si fuera un editor. La palabra esa que tienen los edit, un editor de libros. Señala, señala contradicciones, anacronismos, inconsecuencias que se le pasan a los profesionales. Porque es un lector muy minucioso y además muy constante y le rinde mucho la lectura. Es, es, es que lee siempre. En el carro tiene una luz para poder leer. Todo en la época en que hacía grandes viajes de noche en automóvil, siempre iba leyendo. For over 40 years, the world has known Fidel dressed in military fatigues. At the suggestion of Garcia Marquez, Fidel wore a traditional Guayavera shirt to a non-aligned conference in 1995. He also began wearing business suits the same year. Fidel gave up smoking his Havana cigars in 1985. His only contact with cigars these days is when he signs boxes for celebrities to benefit public health care in Cuba. The thing that surprises me about Fidel, though, actually, is that he can't dance. I read that somewhere. I don't understand it. I think that's truly an interesting thing there. <laughs> and he can't sing either. Oh, gosh. Well, good thing he's got all those other good qualities. <laughs> Fidel. Bueno, yo nunca lo he estado en fiesta con él. No sé si ha bailado o ha cantado, pero a él le gusta el canto. Y te acordarás de aquella flor que yo sembré para ti cuando un día te di mi corazón. Dice él, entendemos. Quiere que su pueblo sea culto y esa palabra ha gustado mucho en su pueblo. Por eso el pueblo lo quiere. Cuando no lo quiera... El pueblo lo tumba. Pero mientras el pueblo no lo tumbe, quieto ahí. When Fidel turned 74, he invited the Buena Vista Social Club to help celebrate his birthday. Most of these musicians are older than he. He also invited Cuban doctors leaving to work in Haiti.
¿Cómo me divierto yo? Tengo buena salud, por eso. noche estábamos de pesca y había un amigo que estaba pescando más que Fidel y Fidel se hacía el indiferente estaba de un mal lado se hacía el indiferente y miraba y veía que allá tenía más y el amigo empezaba a contar muy amigo de él también empezaba a contar para que él oyera que tenía más pez más pescados que, que Fidel y hubo un momento que fui y le dije al amigo, mira, no sigas pescando, porque mientras tengas más que Fidel no nos iremos nunca de aquí, y son las 4 de la madrugada. Al fin se empeñó, le pasó una racha de buena suerte, y cuando tuvo un pescado más que este, dijo, bueno, nos vamos porque son las 5. Sí, no puedo poner la mandíbula, porque es muy fuerte, <risa> Para el abre. abre. Entonces, para la foto. Fidel has always maintained relations with important people from many parts of the world. Ted Turner of CNN was given the Cuban Grand Tour. Not even Fidel and Ted Turner are spared the rigors of the special period, where fuel is scarce and vehicles refuse to start. Castro was determined that Cuba would be fully independent of the United States, and in that, he succeeded. It now is. Uh, in fact, I would say that uh, Cuba now, for the first time in its history, is uh, completely independent. No longer a Spanish colony, no longer a protectorate of the United States, no longer a client state of the Soviet Union. It is on its own. When Fidel was invited to address the United Nations at its New York headquarters, the U.S. government was obliged to grant him entry. Fidel was also invited to visit some rather surprising places. Qué bien. Yo creo todo lo que dice el periódico. I believe everything that your newspaper writes. Menos cuando. <laughs> Men, excepto cuando hablan mal de nosotros. Excepto cuando hablan mal de nosotros. Está bien. Okay. Encantado de estar aquí. Gracias mucho. Una invitación también vino del Wall Street Journal. Quizás es simbólico de los cambios en el mundo. Hay que decir que el presidente de Cuba es en el Wall Street Journal. We saw at lunch. <laughs> Can I ask you quickly? Just very quickly. This is an old, this is, this is an old uh, 1961 magazine. <laughs> Members of the U.S. security force who were assigned to protect Fidel wanted to have their pictures taken with him. You know, women are very... 
Okay. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you know Mr. Wallace, I think. I'm not sure you know. I interviewed you first in 1960 when you were here, Mr. President. And what, and what happened? What happened to democracy? What happened to free elections? We discovered other formulas of democracy. Of democracy and we discovered different formulas, a more honest formula to have the people participate in their democracy. The Cubans, we discovered that it was better than the Americans. What? Oh, uh, right-handed? Yeah. I think it's more than this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Worry about it. <laughs> 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 por lo que hicieron por nosotros aquella vez hace 35 años Dentro cuando no teníamos un de parar en Nueva York ellos me recibieron en el hotel no se puede olvidar en in Harlem uh, the, the historical memory of Fidel having met in the Teresa Hotel with Malcolm is still so much a part of Harlem culture uh, that uh, when I heard that he was planning to visit Harlem, I said, no matter where I am, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, I will definitely try to be in Harlem. Welcome to the Abyssinian Baptist Church where we believe in truth and in justice and equality, and where we join with you in saying, Cuba, yes, blockade, no. God bless you. Les contaba que fui al hotel a ponerme esta ropa. Porque yo decía, si la otra vez fui con esta ropa, ¿cómo me voy a aparecer en Harlem vestido de caballero? Y nuevos movimientos de masa que se están formando con tremenda fuerza. Ya no será la táctica al estilo bolchevique, ni siquiera el estilo nuestro, porque era otro mundo diferente. Estamos pasando de una etapa en que las armas podían resolver a otra etapa en que la conciencia de las masas, las necesidades de la historia y las ideas in 1998, it was announced that the Pope would make his first visit to Cuba. Fidel escorts an advance party from the Vatican on a tour of his office. Voy a ponerlo por aquí para respetar estas figuritas africanas que están aquí. Este cruchó. Una mazorca de maíz. Es Stalin. Ah, está Lenin. Lenin. Y al final, el zar. <risa> Pictures of Che and Jesus Christ adorned Revolution Square. Fidel arrived for the Pope's Mass with the Vice President and Foreign Minister. During the Pope's visit, the Cuban government facilitated contacts with the people. The pontiff denounced the U.S. blockade of Cuba. He also called on Cuba to open its doors to the world and, in turn, 
for the world to open its doors to Cuba. While the Vatican called for an end to the blockade and the United Nations repeatedly voted for the U.S. blockade of Cuba to be lifted, anti-Castro forces in the U.S. Congress continued to tighten the economic screws. Now let me be clear. Whether Mr. Castro leaves Cuba in a vertical position or a horizontal position doesn't matter to me. That's up to him and that's up to the Cuban people. But he must, he will leave Cuba. We're doing business with, with, with communist Chinese. These are the guys that shot me, you know. And we've forgiven them for what they've done. And the North Koreans, they were the ones that got me over there in the first place. And we're doing business with them. Uh, in Vietnam, we lost uh, tens of thousands of Americans. So if you want to be angry with somebody, and the Germans and the Japanese and the Italians, if you want to hold grudges, count me in because I don't like the way I was treated. But if everybody's forgiven except an island country that thought the communist Russians would allow them to put missiles there, and then they backed out and took the missiles away, how long do we punish all of Cuba? Y si el precio del bloqueo sería yo, es un precio sencillísimo, es un precio económico. Yo estaría dispuesto a negociar mi vida, lo que no estaría dispuesto a negociar la revolución, a negociar el socialismo, a negociar los principios. The Miami Cuban community has agitated for U.S. opposition to Fidel ever since the revolution and continues to demonize him. No hay que olvidar que todos los medios de comunicación en Miami, radio, prensa, periódico, diariamente están y durante años han estado alimentando al público común de Miami con noticias falsas sobre Cuba. Hay un volumen de noticias falsas. ¿verdad? donde la gente llega a imaginarse como a Cuba como una prisión gigantesca. The momentum towards greater engagement with Cuba was spurred by the Elian González episode because Americans saw that our policy in fact was controlled by this little group of hardline exiles down in Miami responding to their own views and interests and not to the interest of the nation, not to the interest of the United States as a whole. What caused the conflict between Miami and Havana to hit front pages all over the world was the saga of Elian Gonzalez, a six-year-old boy. Elian's mother had drowned while trying to get to the United States. Elian's great uncle, Lazaro Gonzalez, took the shipwrecked Cuban schoolboy into his house and influenced by anti-Castro groups refused to return him to his father, Juan Miguel, in Cuba. This little boy became a cause for Miami's anti-Castro exile community. But the vast majority of the American people favored Elian's return to his father. The Cubans were outraged. The people quickly took up Elian's cause, demanding that the boy be returned to his father, Juan Miguel. Millions of workers, students, housewives, and grandparents all over the country took part in demonstrations, even Fidel. This issue united the country more than any other since the revolution. Juan Miguel and his immediate family traveled to Washington after the U.S. courts ruled in their favor. Fidel was there to see him off. It would take another three months to finally bring Elian back home. In the case of Fidel, we entered into his family with this suffering. Y se sintió 
eh, como uno más de la familia, sufrió con todo esto. Y imagínese, inclusive lo dijo, de que había sido uno de los momentos más emocionantes cuando nos vio llegar aquí. In all, Elian had been away from Cuba for seven months. Fidel, a pesar de que Sentía un gran deseo de conocerlo, de poder eh, ver a Elian. Eh, esperó hasta que el niño cursara su primer grado. Y él le trajo de regalo un libro de la edad de oro y, y una caja de bombón. Que tú has terminado el primer grado. Muchas felicidades. Así que tú no te vayas a comer esto y gastar eso. <risa> Y él le dijo a Elian, no te vayas a equivocar y te vayas a leer la caja de bombón y comerte el libro. Y ya, con esto. Fidel Castro overthrew a dictator at the age of 32. Now, at 74, he is still a rebel, defiantly confronting the most powerful nation on earth, still making speeches that last for hours. Acknowledged as an important third world leader, he is still playing a key role in world affairs. Fidel Castro is not any longer a, a realistic character. He's a, he's a larger than life guy. He's the most vicious, evil person in the world to a handful of, of Cuban Americans uh, that are in Miami and who lobby the Congress. He's a monster who eats people and chews their heads off. And, uh, and then to other people, he's a savior. And to other people, he's just a very interesting and extremely clever uh, world leader. And to somebody else, he has huge historical value because, as you say, he's outlived nine American presidents. And because he's, he's been in contact with history in a way that almost nobody alive has been. He really has been there, done it, seen it, and moved it, been a part of it, pushed it in some way. He is a redwood tree. He's an old growth redwood tree. And all around him has been clear cut, and he's still standing. And they're lusting to go in and make that final cut And then we will have nobody, really, you know. We'll have, I mean, not like that. We'll have many other wonderful people, and we ourselves will be, you know, wh whoever and whatever we are, but um, he is an inspiration. Es que se recordará como los grandes hombres de este siglo, aún los que piensan que es por lo malo. Es decir, sea por lo bueno, o sea por lo malo, sea por las dos cosas al mismo tiempo, Fidel no se olvidará en mucho tiempo. Pero al final la gente tendrá que reconocer que fuimos cristianos, que defendimos nuestras convicciones, que fuimos rebeldes. Y si a David se le recuerda, porque luchó contra Goliat, Goliath, a los cubanos, the Cubans, que constituye un David mucho más pequeño much David, contra un Goliat mucho más grande, much bigger Goliath, se le tendrá que recordar we'll have to be por lo menos tanto como at se least le recordará. As as David is Mi actitud de rebeldía me aislaron. Tenía todo el tiempo para leer. Leía 12 horas, 14 horas, 16 horas. Y después nunca he tenido oportunidad de leer tantas horas seguidas. 
Fidel and his companions were freed after two years. Batista, giving in to popular protest, declared a general amnesty for political prisoners. Six weeks after their release, Fidel left for Mexico, and there, with a group of followers, they planned a new attempt to overthrow the dictator. Looking for support, Fidel toured Cuban communities in the United States, in New York, New Jersey, and Florida. Many sympathizers, both rich and poor, contributed to his cause. By the following year, 1956, Fidel had assembled the nucleus of a guerrilla force and felt ready to return to Cuba. A young Argentine doctor, Ernesto Che Guevara, joined them. En los unió en primer lugar sus ideales. Hay una pequeña escrito, un pequeño escrito de mi papá donde dice, me pasé toda la noche hablando con el jefe, sí, con Fidel y al otro día amanecí siendo miembro de su de su grupo, ¿no? After the legendary 12-hour meeting, Che's life became an important part of the Cuban Revolution. 82 people, including Che, set out from Mexico on the cabin cruiser Granma. An uprising in Santiago de Cuba was planned to coincide with their arrival. Horas antes de entrar ese embarco, se cayó un hombre al agua. Empezaron a buscarlo y el hombre no aparecía y gritábamos. Fulanito, Roque, Roque, no aparecía Roque, pero hasta que al final dice Fidel, y de aquí no nos vamos hasta que no lo, hasta que no lo salvemos. Y eso conmovió a la gente, y le levantó la, la, la combatividad al escuchar esa frase. Y decir, coño, con este hombre no hay, no hay abandonado. ¿Y lo encontraron? No hay olvidado, sí, sí, lo encontramos, lo encontramos. A costa de que se se echara a perder la, la, la expedición. The synchronization of the uprising and landing failed. The Batista military successfully put down the revolt in the city. The grandma arrived two days later than expected, and the group landed in a mangrove swamp. The 82 men scattered, but were soon discovered by Batista's forces. Fidel and a few others escaped and refused to admit defeat. Of the original 82, only 21 managed to regroup in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. This is where the guerrilla war began, and the initial group was able to survive and grow. Che Guevara was the group's doctor. The first commander that did Fidel Castro in the Sierra Con el consenso de todos nosotros, dijo, aquí el que ve el primer comandante es Che. Porque es el más preparado, porque conoce los caminos, porque para mí es el más estratega. Fue el che. Después fue Raúl y yo, y después Camilo, Ramirito y los demás. Después. Much of their support came from the farmers in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. Some of them joined the guerrillas and became commanders. Both men and women soon joined Fidel's guerrilla movement, and despite traditional male prejudice, a women's battalion was formed. One of the most important people in his life was a woman called Celia Sanchez. She was the daughter of a rural physician. Her father had provided free health care to many of the poor, impoverished rural people in the area. And she was very much attracted to Fidel's revolutionary movement. Celia Sanchez remained at Fidel's side for 20 years and held important government posts until her death in 1980. Fidel and his commanders built up their 26th of July movement guerrilla army from a wide range of political allegiances. Batista's forces were trained by the United States, which also armed them with tanks, artillery, and aircraft. They threw all that force against the guerrillas in a war that lasted two years. The 26th of July had a strong underground movement in the cities. Uh, there were sabotage efforts against the Batista government and demonstrations and so forth. The Batista government reacted very strongly. Uh, bodies were left by the side of the road. Uh, 
students, uh, young people who were suspected of being rebel sympathizers were shot, or in some cases jailed and tortured. Uh, as a result of all that, public opinion turned massively against uh, Batista. An estimated 20,000 people were murdered by government forces during the Batista dictatorship. The rebels put out leaflets and a newspaper, and by 1958 also had a radio station keeping the people informed about developments. Fidel's interviews with foreign journalists ended rumors that he had been killed. Aware of the importance of the media, he made sure he was accessible to the press, even in English. Our political philosophy is representative democracy and social justice in a well-planned economy. Muchas de las cosas que hicimos están por encima de lo que nos imaginábamos en aquella época incluso. Y algunas cosas de las ocurridas han sido más difíciles también y más duras de las que nos imaginábamos en aquella época. January 1959, Fidel made a triumphal entry in Havana. It had taken 25 months to defeat Batista. With victory achieved, Fidel sought to make Cuba a united and independent nation. On this beautiful Caribbean island, Fidel Castro has led Cuba for over 40 years. A socialist survivor in a capitalist world. For some, he is a demon. For others, a symbol of resistance and social justice. Ese árbol no existía. Vamos por la casa que fue de la abuela. In 1996, at the age of 70, Fidel revisited his childhood home with a longtime friend, the world famous Colombian novelist Gabriel Garcia Marquez. En la lengua, con la misma lengua que acababa de decir horror y Fidel began life in Biran, a farming area far from Cuba's capital. He was the third oldest of three boys and four girls. Fidel's father, Angel, who was an immigrant worker from Spain, eventually became a wealthy sugarcane planter. His parents are buried near the family home. It was in this public school that Fidel first studied as a child. Estaba de frente, un poquito así, 
<laughs> From this simple school, Fidel's family sent him to a Catholic boarding school in Cuba's second largest city, Santiago de Cuba, and then to the Jesuit-run Belen High School in Havana. Él puede hacer alarde de ser el hombre que más memoria tiene que yo conozca. Hay una cosa que hacía él, las asignaturas que no le gustaban, él se las aprendía gráficamente, gráficamente de memoria. De modo que arrancaba las páginas del libro y lo leía después, después lo leía como si estuviera si tuviera el, la, estuviera leyendo el libro actualmente. Él venía de un colegio donde no había practicado tanto o casi nada el, el básquetbol, eh, sino más bien el soccer. Eh, y en La Habana lo que valía era el básquet. Pues él empezó enseguida a querer practicar básquet y básquet y básquet, y enseguida me dijo a mí, oiga padre, ¿no podría ponerme usted una luz en el flor de básquet sobre el aro para que cuando los demás se acuestan yo pueda de noche seguir practicando. Cuando Fidel Castro se graduó, yo escribí, que era, yo digo, Fidel Castro es madera de héroe, y la historia de su patria un día tendrá que hablar de él. At the University of Havana, where Fidel arrived in 1945 to study law, the political atmosphere was so highly charged that it often turned to violence. Students fighting against corruption and injustice were targets of repression. Fidel entered the fray, not as a communist, but as a radical nationalist with a passion for social justice. La universidad fue una gran escuela, la verdad, una, una gran escuela donde para mí eh, nos formamos nosotros y se formó desde luego Fidel. Nosotros organizamos el movimiento estudiantil junto con el movimiento obrero. Fidel tenía ya desde entonces características muy especiales. La asamblea más compleja, la situación más, eh, más difícil de desentrañar, él la dominaba con la palabra. En la escuela de filosofía, el alumnado era casi todo muchachas, y además muy lindas. Tanto que en una de las casas de estudiantes, que, en que estas muchachas, muchas del interior, se alojaban, le habíamos puesto la bombonera. Eh, Fidel venía a la escuela de filosofía muy a menudo, porque había una carita, una muchacha, un rostro, He was married to a young woman who was the daughter of one of the elites. That marriage, however, only lasted uh, six years because he was imprisoned for his revolutionary activities and under considerable pressure from her family, uh, they were divorced. He did, however, have a, uh, a son uh, from that marriage. In 1952, now a practicing lawyer, Fidel ran as a candidate for the Orthodox Party, an anti-corruption coalition. Cuba's hero of independence, Jose Martí, inspired the movement. The election never took place. General Batista, who had been in power before, staged a coup to prevent an Orthodox Party victory. For that época. Lo que se vivía con Batista era la corrupción rampante, el juego, la prostitución, la debacle, la violencia. Estamos hablando de un país que iba al desastre. When I knew Cuba before Fidel Castro, I went there. It was the playground of the mafia. We had all the big jazz nightclubs that Nat King Cole and myself were, were, were petitioned to perform in. Uh, I, not, I did not see democracy in Cuba. Uh, as a matter of fact, if anything, I saw blatant racism and oppression. After the Batista coup, all political parties and constitutional rights were suspended. The university was shut down. But the students continued protesting. Fidel began organizing a clandestine opposition group. Muchos eran gente joven con inquietudes 
eh, revolucionarias que seguían a Fidel porque lo veían con condiciones de líder y porque además le decía esta etapa de Cuba hay que resolverla por la acción revolucionaria por cuanto no hay otra salida. On the 26th of July 1953, Fidel led an attack on the Moncada garrison in Santiago de Cuba. This marked the beginning of the armed struggle against Batista. Pensábamos tratar de provocar un levantamiento nacional para el derrocamiento de Batista. Caso de no lograrse el levantamiento nacional, o en el caso de que Batista pudiera re, eh, reaccionar con fuerzas superiores y atacarnos aquí en Santiago de Cuba, la idea nuestra era con las armas del cuartel Moncada marchar a las montañas y librar la guerra irregular en las montañas. The operation had hardly begun when a group of Fidel's followers were surprised by a military patrol. Two of the 150 participants were women, Aide Santa Maria and Melba Hernandez. 61 were killed, only six in combat. The rest were tortured and murdered after their arrest. Both women survived. Fue, fue muy dura, porque después cuando resultamos prisioneros y nos llevaron para el cuartel, y nos sentaron así en el piso, de allí iban sacando a los muchachos, o devolviendo a los muchachos, como el caso de Gómez García, que nos, de, nos de, los devolvieron brutalmente herido, destrozado, sin dientes, aquello era una cosa horrible. A mí no me gusta hablar de esto. Fidel survived thanks to a caring black officer. Then began what would become the most famous trial in Cuban history. Fidel en su alegato, está terminando su alegato, da así en la mesa un, con las manos y dice, condenadme, no importa, la historia me absolverá. Eso es lo que dice Fidel. Todo el personal se queda a la expectativa, se quedan inmóviles. Y entonces él, de pie, vuelve a hacer así, dice, bueno, ya terminé. Al pasar por delante de mí, cuando ya se lo llevara, me dijo, ¿tomaste nota? Digo, sí. Fidel and 29 of his comrades were imprisoned on the Isle of Pines. Fidel for 15 years. He defiantly named his political movement after the date of the Moncada attack, the 26th of July, and smuggled out a manifesto based on his trial defense, entitled, History Will Absolve Me. It would become the inspiration for the revolution. Yo tuve mi 